I'm the voice of the Flying Fleet, CJ Long, and you're watching Fleet Vision. Open look for three. Knocks it down! That's good from long range from Mikey Gabbard! Speed here. Really a heads up fine, and now here comes the turnover. Morgan on the fast break. Should be an easy layup. Lays it in, and that's a tied game! Morgan with the basketball. Across to Whitley. Whitley into the middle of the lane. Whitley all the way to the rack. Good off the glass. Gabbard defended there by Dednam. Hits Hall off the screen. Kick to Casey Sorrell. Open for three. Gotta knock it down. And he does! Oh, Whitley. Ball fake. All the way to the rack. Puts it up off the glass. No good. Dixon with the board. In for two! One last shot. Three seconds. Two seconds. Gabbard. Corey Sorrell. Open for three. Beats the buzzer! Welcome everybody to another edition of Fleet Vision. I'm here with Erskine Women's Basketball Coach Russ Gregg. 0-7, you came off of a tough loss last night against Lander, 76-62, where you only trailed by six at the half. Um, you played a rough first half schedule. Talk about that and how your team um, looks to go into the second part of the season after the break and uh, how this tough schedule has helped them mature. You know, I think, uh, you know, I, I knew going into the season we were going to play a very tough schedule. Um, what I didn't know is that... Uh, Queens and, uh, and Mount Olive were, were going to be as good as they are. Um, so not only did we play a tough non-conference schedule, but we played uh, three very good teams uh, in our league. And, um, you know, so we were up against the eight ball. We only had one home game. Uh, we've been without Janet Dixon, our leading returning player from last year. So, uh, you know, it's been a rough going. But last night, you know, we played a very good Lander team uh, who went to the lead eight last year at Lander. Um, and it, it was a great uh, atmosphere and a good show. And we uh, – we played well for the most part. You know, we've still got these little five-minute lulls that we have that are really hurting us in, in all these games. And once we get that out, I think uh, things are going to start to turn the corner. Um, the good news is we've got a little bit of a break coming up, and, and you know, we can sort of, you know, look at some tendencies that we're doing wrong and, and, and hopefully work on that. Um, and coming into the year, you had a young roster. Um, so far through the first seven games, the young roster's really done a nice job in adapting. And, for example, Tori Wittenberg, leading the team in scoring at this point in time. Um, how do you think they've developed so far this year? You know, I think it's getting better each game. Uh, you know, Tori is a, is a great shooter. Um, she can handle the ball a little bit. She, you know, she's averaging 12 points a game. And then Andrea Benderman, sophomore, uh, averaging 10 points a game. And, and Tara Potter, another sophomore, averaging 9 points and 8 rebounds a game. So, you know, th those three are really doing well. And, and, you know, we're just trying to get a little more consistency out of the others. And once we do that, you know, I think, uh, I think we can turn the corner. And uh, you got another player back last night in Janet Dixon. Um, led the conference last year in rebounding, and you were missing her due to injury for the first six games. You got her back last night, and she came in eight rebounds right away. Um, talk about what her coming back into the lineup is going to be able to do, do for your team as you enter the meat of the conference schedule in January. Well, the big thing that it does for us is it gives us a, good, a, a really good post rotation. Um, we're also without a, a freshman post, Morgan Alexander, um, who's been out with an ankle injury. She played in really, and really, she's only played one game. Uh, she had six points at the Belmont Abbey in nine minutes. So, you know, we're looking forward to getting her back as well. So, you know, but we'll have a very, very good uh, post rotation. And then what it also allows you to do, it also allows you to look and look at maybe playing Andrea Benderman a little bit out on the wing and, and uh, trying to exploit, uh, you know, some, some areas that, that we feel like we can get better at. All right, Coach, your team's 0-7. Um, a lot of times a team at that standing might be low in the confidence department. Going into the break, How's your team in the locker room in terms of confidence moving forward? Um, are they pretty confident in their ability to get some wins in the second half, or what's your view on that? You know, I think anytime you're you're 0-7, there's definitely going to be some confidence issues. Um, but also, we're young, and sometimes that's a good thing. Uh, you know, last year we, we, we were 2-7, and seven, um, and then we rebounded very nicely and, and, and finished the regular season 13-13. and 13. 
So, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, it's tough, but I also think that, um, you know, the morale has been very good. Uh, and, and like I said, when you're young, you can also be dumb, and sometimes you just keep playing, and, and that's what I like. All right, folks, there you have it. That's Coach Russ Gregg. His women return to action on New Year's Eve as they take on Southern Wesleyan. They'll go on the road for three state conference games right after that. So uh, thanks for joining us today, Coach Gregg, and good luck, luck in the second part of the season. Thank you, CJ, and have a Merry Christmas. Welcome back, everybody. I'm here with Erskine men's basketball head coach Mark Peeler. Thanks for joining us today, Coach Peeler. Glad to be here, CJ. Uh, you had a good win last night going into Christmas break, 63-51. to 51. Uh, Shot a little bit spotty from the field, but talk about the overall performance in the game. and It was enough to get a win. Well, it was. It was it, you know, as we said afterwards, it's, it's nice to – I think you start becoming a good team when you start winning games and you don't shoot the ball exceptionally well. And, um, we had a lot of games last year where we didn't shoot the ball well and we weren't able to win the games. And we kept talking about – becoming a better team that, that could win games ugly in some sense. And, you know, we've been on our guys for the last two weeks probably to, to maybe step up defensively. And I thought last night we made we, we, we definitely played the best defense that we played this yeah. part this first half of the season. And, you, yeah, your defense really did step up. You forced 23 turnovers. And you all been forcing. Uh, you all are right now at a plus seven turnover margin. Uh, talk a little bit about that. What that what's that meant in terms of your defense and then gaining some more confidence? Well, I think the best thing that we've done in our first six games has been our, our full court pressure. I feel like we've been able to, to put teams in situations where they turn the ball over, especially late in the game. And, and over the course of the game, we've been able to wear a lot of people down where they make some mistakes at the end of games. And I mean, we have guys that, that, are, that are really good at it. And I think that's, that's kind of what we hope to build on. It makes, it makes your half-court defense better if you can, if you can force some turnovers in the, in the, in the backcourt. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the start of it. And then I think the half-court defense hasn't been very good this year um, at times. And I thought last night it was certainly an improvement from what we've been playing. Um, somebody who's really doing a great job this year is Roderick Perkins. Came in as a freshman from Smyrna, Georgia. And he's done a wonderful job developing as a player. Last night he led the team in scoring with 17 points. Also brought down seven rebounds. Talk a little bit about his development and uh, where, you think, where you see him at so far this season. Well, I mean, we knew he was good. We, we didn't have any questions when we signed him. We, we knew Ryder was going to be a good player for us. I, I doubt that we really thought that he would be able to play at the level that he's playing at right now this quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it has been a bit of a surprise. Um, but, but I do think that his development is still, I mean, he's, his, roof, his roof is high. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like that, that as the season goes on, we're going to see some monster games from him. And he's been able to make some big plays at big times for us so far. And, you know, you don't really expect freshmen to do that this early in the season, but um, but he really has been a blessing to be to come in and 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 have been a surprise. Even though we knew he was going to be a, a good player for us, he's 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 at a higher level right now than what we expected. All right, coach. Right now, five and one. Your players are pretty uh, hyped up about the record. Of course, they're not overly confident. But what are you sensing as the head coach, as their thought with their thoughts in the locker room, as y'all? Um, right now have, are off to the best start since joining the Division II basketball back in 1991. Well, like we talked about the, in, in the first show, you know, we, we're, we're one in 17 over the five, past two years before Christmas. Mm -hmm. So, well, you know, last year we were one in seven, and, and it's just, you know, but to be able to flip-flop that around from five and one from one in seven is a, is a huge thing. And I, I just feel like that, that when you win, winning breeds winning, and, and it starts becoming something that you expect more than just something you hope for. And, and that's been our biggest problem here is that we, we haven't gone into to contests knowing that we could win the game. And, and hopefully the more wins that we can put together, the more confidence level goes up and the expectation not from, from outside forces but from our own guys that, that we're going to win every game is, is, is huge for us. So the start is, is the start. You know, it's only – we still have 20 games to play. So it's, it's a little bit early to, to start getting – freaked out about how good we could be or whatever, but it, it, is, it is something that's a confidence builder as we go into January. All right, back in the first show, I asked you what your expectations were and whether or not you thought you could make the conference tournament. And you said, well, that's not, that's your overall goal, but right now your goal is the record before Christmas, like you just said. You've met that goal five and one. Now, what, what is your goal shift to with your team? Well, I think we, we've been doing this a long time and, and Erskine, I think, has been playing Division Two since 1991. And, Never had a winning season in the, in the regular season. So the, the goal all along has been to get to 14 wins. So um, that would require nine more of them for us to get to 14 wins in a regular season. So I think that's the, the most prominent goal that we're looking at. 
obviously we'd like to we'd like to do really well in the regular season and get a good seed for the tournament. Um, but but all those things kind of come in, in steps. And you know, think of again if we just focus on playing better and continuing to get better, then the win total will increase, the the seeding in the tournament will increase, and how well we can do in the postseason will increase as well. So. We, we need, I hate to sound like a coach, but, but we need to take it one game at a time and, and just keep improving. All right, folks, there you have it. That's Erskine men's basketball head coach Mark Peeler. He says his team's goal is at least 14 wins. They have a chance to continue that as they go on the road on New Year's Day at Brevard. They'll then continue on with three straight conference road games after the Christmas break. Thanks for joining us and have a good Christmas. Thanks.